as I've mentioned a lot, if you're starting out on ACX as a self-producing narrator, do you know what the mastering standards are for submitting your finalized audio? More importantly, do you know how to get there? Well, after this video, you will. If you're serious about creating quality audiobooks, you've probably heard of ACX, the Audiobook Creation Exchange. They have specific standards when it comes to loudness of your audio, and it's something you do not want to overlook because otherwise you will get kickbacks and you won't be able to deliver that final book. If you're looking to get the best possible sound out of your audiobooks, not just to meet the ACX standards, but to also have them have clarity, depth, and warmth, then I want you to have my narration EQ guide. It'll show you the EQ frequencies to boost or cut in the typical ranges that work with any EQ plugin and any voice, and they are the exact same frequency ranges that I have used on all 6,000 plus audiobooks that I've worked on in my career. So just go to thehomeaudioproject.com slash EQ and grab it. Okay, first things first, let's talk about the ACX standards. ACX recommends that you have a loudness target of negative 23 LUFs, which is loudness units full scale. Now you'll see on ACX that they also mention RMS. So what's the difference and which one should you follow? Well, there's good news. And that is that LUFS and RMS are both measurements of loudness. Now, without getting too technical, LUFS, they judge loudness based on how we as humans perceive sound. And RMS, that judges loudness just based on the signal. Trying to hit a single target of negative 23 can be tough. And believe it or not, it actually puts a lot of pressure on you. You need to hit negative 23 or else, right? Well. When we master for ACX, if you aim for the RMS range of negative 18 to negative 23, you'll be just fine and your audio will 99% of the time get submitted. Now they also require that you hit a peak value no higher than negative three. If you go a little bit below that, negative 3.5, negative four, you're still within range. But if you get any kickbacks, it's probably just another issue and ACX will definitely let you know what that issue is. Now, let's dive into the practical tips to help you meet ACX loudness standards without sacrificing the quality of your narration. Tip number one is having proper gain staging. This is the foundation of your audio production. You wanna make sure that your microphone input is set correctly to avoid distortion, but you also don't want it too low either. You wanna aim for a clean, strong signal without clipping. Now I mentioned not having it set too low either because what happens is that when you're recording at a low recording level, while you're definitely avoiding any clipping or distortion and your recording is low, so is your noise floor. So is that a good thing? Well, yes and no. Yes, because you won't clip. If you have a scene that has lots of shouting, or energy, but no, because as soon as you raise the gain of your recorded audio, what else comes with it? Your background noise or your noise floor. And for ACX, you can't have your noise floor go above negative 60 dB in terms of RMS. If your DAW has a loudness meter plugin, I highly suggest using that. So that way you know where to start. And if you don't have a loudness meter plugin, I have a link in the description for a free one that you can grab. You just want to make sure that your recording level is within the sweet spot. Tip number two is having consistent recording levels. You want to maintain a consistent distance from your microphone throughout the recording to ensure that you get a uniform volume. This makes it a lot easier to meet ACX standards during the mastering process. If you have a scene with lots of shouting, I've seen a lot of narrators practice working their mic, knowing when to back away from it just enough to avoid clipping, 
but then being able to get back into the correct position to continue on with the rest of the read. Now, if you have an audiobook acting coach, this might be a good thing to cover in your next session. Now, let's talk about compression. We all know that it's a valuable tool in audio mastering, and I've covered it quite a bit on this channel. But if you don't know, you want to use compression to even out your dynamics in your narration, making the quiet parts louder and the loud parts quieter. This helps achieve a more consistent overall volume. So tip number three is use compression wisely. Set your compressor's threshold, ratio, and attack and release parameters to enhance your narration without making it sound unnatural. And then you wanna to experiment to find the right balance that suits your voice. After that balance, you'll have other tools like EQ, de and a limiter, and we'll cover those in another video coming up. But that's really about it for making sure that the sound gets into the right spot to meet the ACX submission process. But you also have to keep in mind the correct criteria for the file type. Let's quickly discuss the ACX submission requirements. Make sure that your audiobook meets the criteria by following their guidelines on file formats, bit depth, and their sample rates. For ACX, it's actually pretty simple in your DAW. When you export, you just want to make sure that you're selecting the file type that matches their site. And in this case, it's 192 kilobytes per second or higher, 44.1 kilohertz, MP3, constant bitrate. And your files need to be either all stereo or all mono. I usually recommend just going with mono because we're producing a single voice here and a single voice is a mono signal. But there you have it. That's really about it for the mastering side of the standards for ACX. There are a couple of other requirements that you'll need to follow in terms of file management, but I'll have a link in the description for those where you can get the full detail, the full rundown in terms of file length, naming, and more. The standards for ACX don't have to be a daunting task. By paying attention to your gain staging, your recording levels, and using compression and all the other mastering tools to get it up to spec, you can create audiobooks that not only meet ACX requirements, but stand out to your audience. And like I mentioned, if you need help with getting clarity and warmth out of your audiobooks, then grab my narration EQ guide at thehomeaudioproject.com slash EQ. With that, I hope you have an awesome rest of your week, and I'll see you in another video real soon.